Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome to a special edition of Guilecast, a birthday edition, no less. Unfortunately, it is not Sopcom that's one year older, nor Faf. It is myself. I am a year older. That's right. It's like I hit an oil patch at 25, and now I'm just skidding towards the grave. But there's nothing that can be done about that. It is intrinsically natural. Some would say almost as natural as the affinity sirens have between pleasures of the flesh and large pointy objects. Say no more. I thought we'd have a couple of ladder matches today, and it's all a little bit mysterious. We're going to do two games today, one of which will be laden with epicosity, i.e. the game time will be over an hour, and the uh, the other will, will not be quite so long, but um, uh, you're not going to know which is which. Hey, see what I did there? So basically, lots of people very upset by the spoiler of the timer on the YouTube channel. So they're doing a bit of an experiment today, taking this opportunity to jumble things around. So you're not going to know what game is going to end where. And uh, hopefully that will enhance your viewing experience. But anyway, the first game of maybe epicosity will go down on Via 3 Protectorate. So hold on to your potatoes as we go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. All pretty familiar with Protectorate by now. Let's take a look at our players. Going first over here at the bottom left in the blue corner. In the corner. He's not in the corner. He's in the corner. And uh, he's misclicked, however. He has gone Cybern. And his name is Mr. Smith. Good friend of Mr. Anderson from the Matrix, of course. And he's opening first land, second air. No strange surprises there on this one. Let's take a look at his opponent up here at the top right in the red corner. Seen quite a lot of him recently. It's Yamadama going Aeon, opening first land, second land as well. Let's take a look at initial build cues you'd expect. On a 10x10 10 10 like this, we've got so much stuff in the way, you're not going to get any lab play. I'd be very surprised if you'd see any hunters roaming about the map or anything like that. It's going to be engineers pretty much off the bat for at least the first five. One, two, three, four, five out there for Smith. And then we do have a Mantis and a Mole. So credit where credit's due to Mr. Smith. He's getting a little bit of regression on the table. What did we have for Yamadam? We had one, two, three, four, five, I think. And then we went to an Aurora and a Spirit. So Aurora and its associated scout there for a little bit of intel. So both of these guys are going to get one. Are they going defensively? It looks like they might well be. This is all anti-lab play at the moment. These guys wanting to hang on to their initial expanding NGs. That's an interesting decision, actually. You send this out here, and you build a factory on the corner. And what does that do? Well, it forces that engineer to reclaim a lot of these rocks without you having to sit there and micro all of the, uh, the commands. So it's not a bad... And, of course, gets you a factory out of it as well. So it's not a bad little tactic there from Yama. I like what I see. Bombs away from a first initial bomber out from Mr. Smith. Does manage to snag an engineer. Very nicely done. However, defending interceptor out there from Yamadama. Successful at picking off that bomber. Limiting the damage to just one NG kill. Nice work so far from both of these guys. Uh, then we've gone third and fourth land. So it's not uh, like any crazy super heavy air strat is coming out of Mr. Smith's corner. At least for the moment. And uh, we kept guessing a little bit about what's going on in the main base. But we are seeing, of course, expansion further to the left for Yamadama. One land factory in play already at the mouth there of uh, the entryway to his main base. And, of course, one further over here in the reclaim field. And the Mantis up front, that might well have been the first one that we saw coming out there, is going to pick off a couple of units. One of which was definitely an engineer. That second engineer, at least if it was a second engineer, was moved forward on a reclaim mission. Didn't get that finished in time, but Aurora's will tidy up the job before he manages to pick off a third unit. Nice work, though, from Mr. Smith. Taking a look at eco-wise, both very close for the moment, 21 to 20. Let's have a look at reclaim. 2,600 banked for Yamadama so far versus... Uh, what are we going here? They're just chopping around. Versus 1,400 for Smith, and that might be in no small part to uh, the work over here from this little factory and he's actually producing engineers on and off so it's almost like a little reclaim station always nice to see the um, little decisions that these pros make on these maps and uh, some of them have some nice ideas when it comes to build orders how to efficiently scoop up the resources a little bit of an inti fracar going on here to the left looks like mr smith's gonna win yes he does gonna get that inti out of there on about 40 hp 
and ACU's on the move. Mr. Smith a little bit further out of his base, moving over to the right-hand side of the map. Queued up a couple of land factories with that bad boy. Up here, Yamadama has also moved out of his base, not quite as far as his opponent. He's sitting in the uh, little space between these four mexes at the moment. Got all of those online. It's interesting to work on some more land factories as well. Very important, of course, to get your spam up ASAP on this one. And a lot of civilian structures that are worthy of reclaiming in the middle, of course, but you've got to be careful because they are all flanked with these eruptors. T1 Aeon PD guarding these at six different locations. Sorry, seven different locations. I was forgetting about these ones down here. So that's a lot of PD you've got to be wary of, and it, of course, prevents you from coming around the center too close, coming too closer shortcut towards your opponent's base so it forces people to move around the fringes one of the reasons that this map uh, can actually promote slightly longer games always nice to see so forces move down the eastern side of the map for Yamadama coming down to the bottom right hand edge Mr. Smith also pumping out a few forces heading out wait to see what uh, is going on on the waypoint side of things Nothing set up. Looks like they're just queuing there for the moment. 45 mass to 35 now in favor of Yamadama, who seems to be doing a little bit better on the eco side of things, at least for the moment. Mr. Smith, though, catching up bit by bit, and then Curse the Commentator comes in, and Yamadama leaps ahead once again. And then it's 45 to 45, so it's fluctuating heavily is the point we're trying to get across to you at the moment, and it's basically impossible to tell. And uh, Mr. Smith now having colossal power issues, going to want to be getting that sorted out as quickly as possible. Does that mean we have an upgrade on the way? We do have T2 Air on the field already for Mr. Smith. Could we be seeing some renegades, some gunships on the field to harass Yamadama? Could be interesting. First little bit of serious land action going on over here in the east. Smith getting his Mantis involved up close and personal with the Auroras, but facing overwhelming odds, he will eventually be beaten down, but I think he at least took an equal number of units with him. Got a couple of Medusas up front for Mr. Smith, picking off the T1 PD around the civilians in the center. A lot of mass that's going to open up to him, and a lot of reclaim as well, should he decide to go for it and actually finish those off. Needs to be wary, of course, of the incoming forces, especially from the top from Yamadama. Another little push over in the east, meanwhile, from Mr. Smith getting absolutely cut down. Overwhelming numbers of Auroras, but it's a more testing, probing attacks more than anything, I should surmise, at this point in time. Still no presence in the top left starting location or the bottom right starting location. We have got a whole bunch of engineers in the corner being busy picking up all of these strange trees that you just know if they bore fruit, it would kill you if you tried to eat it. Certainly some unhealthy looking stuff, but that's getting thinned out nicely, biohazard though it is. More forces coming in now from Smith coming to take control potentially of the bottom right hand corner. We're hearing a, a lot of action kicking off this time potentially in the middle and it looks like Yamadama has made a play for the center as well. Aurora's snatching the Medusas as they're rolling through. The Medusas of course don't have any intel with them. Absolutely no scouts on board so like uh, Yamadam is able to pick those off without too much difficulty. He's not microing them though. And he is losing a few more units than he needs to. Shan't bother him in the long run, I shouldn't think. Still a few units of PD to be concerned with though. Yamadam is straying a little bit too close to the most easterly PD. And he's going to lose about three or four units to those in the center. A little engagement over in the west. A uh, large bounce of Mantis bearing down on a forward group of units for Yama Dharma. It's going to go badly for Dharma. And those renegades are indeed on the field, working on more reinforcements heading to the bottom right hand corner for Yama Dharma. There are the odd thistle in amongst these tanks. There is the odd thistle couple left in there and at the moment Renegade's not prioritizing them they're just sort of hanging about they're not being issued commands but uh, a couple of thistles aren't really enough to concern the Renegades but this band of interceptors certainly will be first Renegade down second Renegade down Smith coming in with his own air force to try and do something about the presence 
on the field for Yamadama's Air Force would like to brush them aside. Also, ideally, not like to be fighting above that thistle, although just the one that won't be hurting him too much. Doesn't want to allow Yamadama to get in behind. And hangs a right turn. I think Smith is going to do slightly better out of that one. Another couple of renegades on the field up here. Working on some of Yamadama's forces as they move left away from these defensive structures. You could do with getting a couple of static anti-air turrets in play. But for the moment, his interceptor's tidying up nicely. Some reducers from Mr. Smith picking off a forward mechs there. And now we're getting another push this time from Mr. Smith over in the west. Yamadama trying to seize that top left-hand corner. Perhaps could have done slightly better working on some more land factories there to really gain some presence in that top left corner. As it happens, Engineer brushed aside as well as the defending Auroras. Ramadama posturing with some more. Ramadama could send those in, surely. Bring them up here, use the range advantage. Should be able to defeat Mr. Smith's forces. The question is, how well is Yamadama stocked for intel up here? Not well at all. He's got the odd scout there, but uh, might be concerned about what might be loitering around the rest of it. Intel is vital on any map, but uh, Protectorate, one of those ones because it's so square, there's so many avenues you can be got at. You want to get decent intel up and running as soon as possible. 13 minutes gone in this one. 94 to 80 mass in favor of Yamadama. Let's take a look at Reclaim and a whopping 28,000 banks so far for Yamadama. 26,000 banks so far for Mr. Smith in just 13 and a half minutes. That really is a testament to the amount of reclaim that's available on this map. It's starting to look a little bit cleaner now. Engineers working their way through them as they go, but there's still plenty of rocks you can see in the distance there. Lots of resources still to gather. And it's nice because it is a 10 by 10. It's a large open map with avenues to attack but let's say lots of reclaim allows the battle to escalate quickly and a ton of renegade gunships coming in here for smith working on the t2 tanks up front combination of blazes and obsidians see how quickly the hp evaporates on that obsidian when they're all targeted on it mr smith has actually moved forward with his commander he's trying to throw together as many auto guns as he can but the presence there of the Fervors, T1 mobile artillery for Aeon and Yamadama, making life difficult, picking off the odd unit of PD as he goes. But in comes Yamadama's Air Force going after the gunships, landed on the ground in a big way. That's a lot of gunships to lose. And it's not like Mr. Smith was able to do anything about that. He's focusing now quite heavily on regaining the initiative in the air. You see the amount of interceptors coming across the field. I want to set a rally point further back here and then send them in all together. As at the moment, they're just getting picked off one at a time, going into that ball of interceptors belonging to Dharma. And you've got to think, who's more set up on the field on this side of the map? You've got to think it's Yama Dharma, unsurprisingly, since it's very much closer to his base. Smith got to be a little bit careful here, but he's got T2 Tech on his commander. He has the T2 Engineering Suite starting to build some Tech 2 PD. Got a uh, Burst Master in place, some flat coverage as well, keeping the comm safe from a potential gunship attack. I don't think he needs to be too concerned. Actually, we've got uh, no, it is still T1 up here. So we still don't have T2 Tech on the field for Yamadama in terms of air. We do have T2 Tech on the ground, of course. And still no overriding winner up here at the top left, although I think Yamadama could be about to make a grab. All that's left up in this corner now is a ball of build capacity. Can Yamadama see it? He will notice the radar signatures. Definitely wants to go after those, kill off the build capacities before they can establish any kind of base. But a large force of Mantis and Medusa pushing up through the middle there from Smith. Just rolling over some small resistance from Yamadama. The odd unit getting trapped in amongst the buildings there. And 
Dharma might want to withdraw some of this T2 force from this corner into intercept. He's uh, got a unit of PD on the way. These other two units here are PD. They're seekers. A little bit of anti-air coverage. The Eruptor online. Unfortunate placement. Relief of the land blocking a lot of those shots initially. But as the Mantis come over the top of the hill there, it's able to open up. There's a few more units incoming. One blaze in the center, dealing as much damage as he can in the center. Getting EMP though from the Medusa blasts. And now the Medusa's rolling in. You can see how devastating the EMP blast is on units of PD, knocking them out of commission, preventing them from doing any damage while other rounds use up their travel time and land on top. Build capacity getting slaughtered up here at the top left now for Mr. Smith. And uh, definitely not seeing any kind of commitment to this top left corner, at least for the moment. He wants to make certain of everything on the right-hand side. As one, two, three Cerberus turrets now. A couple of Zappers, Burst Master, and a TAC missile launcher, which is currently launching, I think. Since it's launching. There we go. What's it going for? Usual state of affairs would be T2 Mexes going straight over towards Dharma's main base. And it could be a little bit of a mistake. We've got a Volcano TMD in place there for Yama Dharma. Up goes the countermeasure. And that will be no joy for Mr. Smith. So good anticipatory skills there from Dharma. Probably saw it actually. There's been a lot of air conflict over the top of Mr. Smith's comm. So he's probably hip to the goings on. But another missile looks like it's taking a similar trajectory and will most likely also fall foul of the same TMD as the first. There it goes. So still no joy for that TM. L. He said TMD here, but I didn't, so get off my back about it. And the mass extractors that were picked up quite early on for Mr. Smith, now under pressure, just two left in the center. Engineers coming in from Yamadama to scoop up some of these civilian structures don't actually yield quite as much in terms of mass as you might think but they're definitely still worth getting now we're seeing some counterfire coming in from Dharma they're not tap missiles they're missiles from the mobile missile launcher here the even songs and some T3 mobile RT so Transition to T3 complete for Mr. Smith. Where is your HQ? Going to be want to keep tabs on that. It must be further over here. There we go. T3 factory in plays. Mixing up bricks and trebuchets. Trebuchet fire could be crucial at overrunning this position up here. We do have a couple of units of PD, T2 PD, the Oblivion turrets there, but they're both down to just a handful of hit points apiece. Actually, the factory seems to be the choice target, but I'd like to see a few shells land on top of these tanks in the center here, and as soon as do I say it, of course, one comes flying in. Mr. Smith, uh, and his mod announcing the completion of the RAS, but a large push over in the west from Yamadama. There are some units of PD in place, but a lot of fervors in amongst this unit mix. Should be able to deal with them nice and quickly. One down, two remain slightly further back. Do we have any units incoming? Not as yet. That might be partially due to the fact that we've not only had T3 emerge very recently for Mr. Smith, on the ground we now also have t3 in the air asf's circling and he could do a lot worse than to get a whaler or two out onto the field because he's gonna need it this position under serious pressure now from yama dharma 
Yamadama has transitioned into T3 land himself. He's busy producing harbingers and has also got T2 air on the field. But will find himself out teched in the sky very soon indeed. Let's take a look at what Yamadama's got on the ground in terms or in the air in terms of power. 47 interceptors for Yamadama. And 33, that looks like, for Mr. Smith. However, he's also got a tidy group of ASF 7 and counting. So a whaler or two right now, or even just a few renegades, come in, finish off the Ascendants first of all, and then go after the Thistles. He'll have free range. What does that attack look like to Mr. Smith? Well, not great, as you can see. Still lacking decent intel coverage. That may as well actually being part of the power issues he's having trying to produce this t3 air force but strap bombers out on the way and look at the progress being made over in the east these trebuchets completely demolishing this forward position for yamadama finds himself down three t2 mexes the land factory down as well and almost all of the units have to fall back to a safer position there are at least a decent bunch of oblivion turrets backed up but these revenants would love to go on on the offensive unfortunately they have base defense duty on their roster they circle above more units from yamadama piling in the western entrance to mr smith's base and a lot of build capacity under threat suddenly they are able to throw together point defense pretty quickly once they're all assigned to it question is how many units of engineers will die in the process thankfully a brick for mr smith is on the scene helping cut through them i think he's got a little bit lucky there though he left that incredibly late he is however paying for it on the eastern edge of his base four mechs is taken out so we've got four mechs down here two Closer mexes to the main base out of commission as well. And, of course, four mexes to the right. Mr. Smith now down horribly. 147 to 208 mass at latest count. Revenants switching it up now, going on the offensive. Mr. Smith very wary of getting tangled up in defensive mode. Needs to go on attack. Help stifle some of the large amounts of units coming out from Yamadama's side of the map. Obsidian tanks rolling in now the eastern entrance going straight after the iron reactor mr smith was having issues with his power grid a little bit earlier definitely won't want to lose this t3 power plant absolutely essential that he hangs on to it if he can goes down to 100 hit points and boom just unsuccessful at holding on to it there what's that do well it doesn't cripple him completely he seems to be around two to three hundred positive power net at the moment on current expenditure but he is still having decent success over here in the east look at that Yamadama forced to fall right back he is at least getting some harbingers on the field that hero brick not so much of a hero only two kills to his name so far 16 for this one five to the other but harbingers making it in around the back and picking off transports laden with engineers look at all the build capacity getting slaughtered there by all of these blazes renegades coming in to defend but want to pick off that ascendant first which they don't manage to do ow that's actually painful ASFs and interceptors landing in an ill-advised position there right in front of Mr. Smith's bricks that they quickly take off when they realize the error and another T3 power plant out of commission a third under threat we'll take a look at what this is doing to Mr. Smith's power in just a moment he's trying to throw together another one but a third one goes down somehow he still has his head above water he must be building power someone else he's got these T2s up here but is he building power elsewhere i really can't say the only explanation is is he's dramatically reduced the amount of building he's doing mr smith down to 104 down below 100 mass now 94 to 159 yamadama 
running away with this one slightly in terms of eco. This has been a phenomenally successful assault on Mr. Smith's side of the map, and he's actually withdrawing his ACU now, presumably to help defend. He's actually be coming up here for the moment to help speed up the upgrading of these mass extractors. He realizes he's lost an awful lot of eco over the last five minutes or so. 26 and a half minutes gone in this one so far. Definitely needs to put his pedal to the metal in terms of mass game. Otherwise, he will quickly find himself completely swamped. Those three bricks we saw earlier now on a little bit of a counter-offensive. The Amadama wheeling left with some of his troops to defend. A few units of point defense on the way. One in play already. A couple a little bit further left further back one on the way actually here and a Sam concerned of course by the arrival no doubt of the revenants on the field strap bombers can be a scary sight especially if you think your opponent has dominant air but I'm not sure he does now Amadama what are we up to on the ASF front well only eight but he is catching certainly 17 on the field for Mr. Smith And Yabadama has actually managed to grab some of the mass extractors in the center of the map. Only three of them, but still. Six mass per tick going into his coffers. And look at that mass differential now over 100. 233 for Yamadama, 126 for Mr. Smith. Let's take a look at reclaim values so far. 28 minutes gone, 77,300 banks so far for Yamadama. And 53,000 going, 54,000 for Mr. Smith. Still a decent sum, but it's all relative. And when your opponent's bringing in 20,000 more mass than you, that is going to hurt in the long run. Interceptors circling overhead now from Dharma. It's more of a uh, seek and destroy slash scout don't care if I lose them mission. That's a good thing too because ASF's now dispatched from Smith. Going to get in behind all of them and pop them like stale popcorn at one of Odeon's worst or best cinemas. It really makes no difference since all of their popcorn is stale. People just need to stop buying it when they go to the cinema. There's no two ways about it. Brick's coming in now from Smith. Threatening this forward position. Dharma trying to throw up more Oblivion turrets. Uh, potentially a minor error not going further up there. Yes, he's worried about these Harbingers. I completely sympathize. That is a scary sight coming in. But uh, finish off that T2 Engineer. Potentially the one behind it. And that ceases all construction in this area for T2 PD. But then, of course... We are privy to the information that might not have been something that Mr. Smith saw. Let's take a look at what he can actually see. Yeah, he may not have moved up far enough to see, see the radar signature on the map there of the engineer. And now it looks like it's Smith's turn to pull back on the east. Nice little compliment of loyalists to back up the bricks there. But uh, sniper bots incoming. Dharma definitely wants to take out that radar station. Now where is Dharma's... Sorry, not Dharma's. Where is Smith's comm? He's back over here, but we've got a bug on the way. 35,000 hit points and climbing out of 90,000 to complete. Again, another large expenditure when he doesn't have tremendous amounts of units on the field. And he's facing an opponent who is definitely all about the spam at the moment. That's uh, moderately risky. But then at the same time, it's not likely to be something Amadama is going to be immediately guarding against. Of course, he's going to have to immediately wrestle air control away from his opponent. Well, Amadama doesn't have air control, but to make sure he asserts his authority in the air. He's going to use that bug effectively. This eastern position, meanwhile, getting pummeled 
as Yamadama tries to break it. The shield gen goes down. We've got one unit of T1 PD still in play and a couple of Cerberus turrets. Net now drops down to one. The bricks worth their weight in gold at the moment. Just enough to hold on to that position, but another round of Harbingers inbound. That surely should be enough to finish it off. Smith actually advancing with that handful of bricks in the west, forcing Dharma to drop back. He is actually quite light on T3 units in that pile. He's probably got around about the same amount, but bricks devastating as they are. Pound for pound, stronger than the Harbinger. Harbinger, of course, having the added bonus of reclaim ability. A little engineering ability they have on board. So useful, and it is uh, helping Yamadama stay ahead, although that gap is diminishing in terms of reclaim between these two. 87,500 for Yamadama, Mr. Smith on 72,000. And there's about to be more mass for Yamadama's coffers over here. Decent battle, of course, just gone on. Lots of wrecks to be harvested, which he now has control of. And the Harbs can get to work on that immediately. This is one of the functions why we're seeing Aeon so popular now that they can reclaim with auto attack. But they're not going to have a huge shelf life large force of renegades come in and brush them aside that bug is online going straight after the harbingers in the west whole groups of build capacity getting slaughtered by the bricks at the same time where is dharma's air force well it's over here and he's got 47 asfs you'd like his chances of being able to bring this bug down smith bringing in his own asfs to defend now, it's going to be a trade-off the bug is surely going to die but Yamadama is probably going to lose most if not all of his air force in the process down goes the bug Dharma backs out and Smith gets in behind finishing off almost all of them so the bug lost but air dominance achieved for the moment Yamadama will immediately sort to rectify that, of course. Build capacity shifted onto that air factory. ASF's production prioritized. Now, where is that bug wreck? It's over here. And, of course, Dharma easily able to get one of these harbingers in to reclaim it. If he has the presence of mind to do so, might not be a bad idea. But Renegade's pushing this group of harbingers back over in the east taking advantage of that heavy loss Yamadama took to his air forces got to capitalize where you can when you can so the two areas of the map where we saw heavy heavy build up early on in this match now lightly defended certainly in terms of structures the small bases that have been erected have been destroyed bricks coming into the top left hand side going after those hubs that are indeed trying to reclaim that bug got a little bit of the way through it but most of the mass still in play i wonder if we'll see a cheeky engineered drop from Mr. Smith to take advantage of that wreck. Probably not a bad idea. And we've got a nuke launcher on the field for Mr. Smith as well. First nuke on the way. Seems to be around 15% done or so. Lots of renegades heading north. Needs to be careful though. Heavy use of ascendants on the field up here for Dharma. Those gunships not going to fare too well amongst condensed flak they're going to go straight after the t3 factory and they're going to get it but those renegades are going to get a beating in the process dharma backing up kills all of the renegades but will not 
regain control of the top left. Bricks shooing them away. In come the engineers, as I thought we would see from Smith going straight after that wreck. Dharma coming in just fractionally too late to deal with the transport. Had he been there a moment earlier, he would have been able to deny that little NG drop. Bricks guarding this forward position, and that is, don't forget, the T3 HQ for Smith. He's not going to want to lose that. He wants to hang on to it at all costs. Otherwise, he's going to lose all production of T3 ground until he gets it rebuilt. Presumably somewhere else, somewhere safer. Bricks doing a good job up front, though, making sure that doesn't happen. Dharma needs to get a more cohesive formation together if he wants to overwhelm these bricks. He's probably got the number of hubs to do it, but uh, not feeling like it. Not at the moment. His decision won't judge him for it. And now these bricks, they are like flies to him. He's Vigo. Taking some T1 bomber fire. Uh, the engineers need to be careful. Bombers could certainly end their day, and I'm assuming that's what happened to the first batch. But the majority of this mass going into Smith's coffers. Let's take a look at the reclaim now. 110 to 111,000 for Smith. To 110,000 to Yamadama. So the work done on that bug, reclaiming it. Definitely putting Smith ahead albeit by a small margin in the reclaim side of things, but look at the mass deficit. 295 to 226 in favor of Yamadama, and it's been this way for some time. Dharma unable to capitalize, at least at the moment. Monkey Lord inbound for Smith. If he times this nicely with an attack from his bricks, he should be able to wipe out these harbingers. Question is, part of the screen is Yamadama looking at, will he notice those red trails coming in quickly enough? There's the laser as it emerges into Dharma's field of view and immediately the harbingers get a retreat order, but how many will they lose in the process? Monkey Lord chasing them down, picking them off one at a time. That's very painful indeed for Dharma. Two units in around the back working on some of these T2 mexes as well. Working to extend Dharma's mass lead. That one T2 mex on 50 HP. Oh my goodness me, Mr. Fervor. Switch target immediately before a Revenant bomb connects with your face. Needs to get on that one. ASAP. Monkey, do Monkey Lord continuing to roll in here. 34 kills to his name, mostly T3. And that's got him three stars of veterancy for his trouble. Four mexes taken out once again. Now, there's quite a lot of PD fire, most of which is protected under shield coverage over here for Dharma as well as a lot of harbingers. So don't think that this Monkey Lord is going to be able to just stroll in here without any difficulties whatsoever. I highly doubt it. And indeed, current move order suggests Smith feels the same way. Instead, he's going to take a pass across the front of Dharma's base and capitalize on an easy kill option for a couple of T2 mexes and some engineers who are trying to erect a stronger defense up here at the front, but I think it's going to be too little too late. In comes the Monkey Lord, laser away, and a round of shockers in over the top. Takes that Monkey Lord down to around 46,000 HP. Yamadama screening with his own ASFs to give them cover as they work on chewing through all of the hit points on that Monkey Lord. That drops down to around 33,000 HP. But the Defenses at the front of the base are wiped. Of course, this is dangerous territory now. This is a large mass gift as and when it dies for Yamadama in safe territory. Let's 
instead of going into the main base, it's going to wheel left to try and take out this fortification. Gets another rank of veterancy there, giving it a bit more time, but it's now taking a lot of strap bomber fire. And it's now also in range of these oblivion turrets. Uh, there indeed is your gift. The question is, was enough damage done to make it worthwhile? I think we can definitely say it was. All these forces forced back. What looks to be probably six T2 mexes taken out of commission. We can say definitely worth it. And Mr. Smith catching slowly. 259 mass to 309 for a moment there. Nuke away. Where are we going to? Looks like a nuke at this forward position. Do we have any kind of nuke defense? I'm not seeing it. That doesn't mean it's not there because I regularly make mistakes in the heat of the battle. But that nuke is going to con connect and that is going to be the end of that fortification. And more importantly, probably taking the wreck of the Monkey Lord with it. I didn't check beforehand to see if Yamadama had scooped any of that up actually a very shrewd move from Smith bringing the monkey lord into that area that he was probably thinking about nuking anyway so denying all of that mass Yamadama 134,000 banked in reclaim Smith 142 so Smith still ahead on the reclaim side of things and just look what that nuke has done to Dama's eco 194 mass now up to 200 so Smith now leading on Eco, that advantage that Yamadama has had throughout this has now passed. A counter-offensive, meanwhile, in the east from Dharma, but that is going to be stalled, I think, by this bug that's coming in. Will he be successful in taking down this HQ? I think he will. All of the build capacity destroyed. There goes the HQ, a blow to Mr. Smith, but not enough to cripple him. I think he can quickly rebuild that now at this point question is where is he going to select large air engagement over the top of that bug as it gets destroyed things not going quite so clear cut in uh, Mr. Smith's favour in the air this time I think it might do Smith less spread out than Dharma. Strap bombers landing on the ground right in the middle of the fight. Not a great place to park your bomber, it has to be said. And uh, virtually mutual destruction of the ASFs in that fight. Smith just emerging with a minor advantage, but I really do stress that. That really is minor. Renegades out. Once again, taking the uh, opportunity to attack with Dharma's air forces being slightly depleted. Taking some Sam fire on the way there, though. Just be careful. Go picking off some T1 mexes. Doesn't want Dharma to get re-established in this position. That's good harassment. What ASFs have been built in the meantime are immediately dispatched to counter them. Dumb is splitting up his air forces. Some are tangling with some of Smith's down here in the bottom right. The other's going after the Renegades. Up at the top left. Smith just looking like he's light on the field somehow. He seems to be focusing on the experimental game quite heavily. This is what the fourth experimental. We've had two bugs and two monkey lords, I think, out from Smith as well as a nuke launcher. So it's a lot of uh, eco pushed into uh, non-conventional weapons. Dharma favoring mass spam instead. So two differing strategies on this one. I'm surprised we haven't seen any GCs or anything emerge over the course of this one. Armagers rolling in. Going to catch three loyalists napping. Should be able to kill those off without any major difficulties. But... In comes the second Monkey Lord, or is it third? I can't keep up. And look at that. That's what you need to do in a game at this level. Revenants belonging to Smith coming in, strap bombing the wreck. 
wasn't hopeful that he could get his own engineers in to reclaim it. He has managed to do so. One T3 engineer turning up for Dharma. He's not going to be successful. Monkey Lord sees to that. And Smith presumably pulling ahead once again in reclaim. 156,000 for Smith. No, I stand corrected. Dharma has pulled a blinder from somewhere. 184,000 banked for him so far. As we approach the 50 minute mark in this one. 30,000 something mass. And it must be, I, I can't even tell you where that's come from at the moment. He's been successful somewhere. Very nice to see. Yet more emphasis on nuke production for Smith. Lots of build capacity on that one. We've actually got an anti-nuke up front for Smith and another Monkey Lord on the way. The question is, do we have more anti-nuke on the field for Dharma? I'm assuming this one has been here for some time. There are already two anti-nuke missiles in that silo. That is presumably why Smith didn't target the main base with that first nuke launcher. I'm assuming that was already in play. Still, pretty strong D going on up here at the southeastern entrance to Yamadama's main base. Monkey Lord's going to have a tough time breaking through that. And now four T2 Mexes under pressure over in the west for Mr. Smith as a group of Harbs come in to finish them off. Wait for Eco to normalize somewhat. Smith having a tough time on the power front. And if that is accurate, it is tough to say. There's so much fluctuation going on. We'll take another look at that in just a moment. A second Monkey Lord on the field. Concurrently moving out west. Going to be able to stop any of these harbingers getting a run by on into the back of Smith's base and now a megalith on the way immediately started construction there right by Smith's ACU nuke in play and he's going after the defenses at the bottom right this is no doubt preceding an attack or an idea of an attack from this monkey lord down here but that monkey lord is sustaining heavy strap bomber fire Oh, anti-nuke away, just strays into range of that silo at the top. Give you an idea of the coverage on that. It does actually extend all the way down here, so if, Yama, if Smith had placed that nuke down here, he would have killed this off and picked off probably these four up here, leaving just this back row. That could have potentially opened the door. But as such, this Monkey Lord shall have to sustain much more damage on its way and still taking shock of fire at the same time and Smith looking like he's deciding against it doesn't want to gift easy mass to his opponent shock is still going after it and they will manage to take it down Smith could have afforded it a bit of bit more protection there had he been quicker off the mark but alas he was not ASFs didn't get there in time and that's a ton of renegades needs to focus on the ascendant though it's getting way more kills than it should do 22 kills for that flak eventually it's taken down but how much damage did those gunships sustain beforehand lots of uh, Support commanders on the field for Yamadama. And it looks like he's slowly upgrading them as well. Another push out in the west for Dharma. Uh, Smith will be able to force that back 
with yet more gunship harassment. Uh, absolutely crucial in this game so far. Another Monkey Lord online. That Megalith is about to go into the green for 75% of its HP. There it goes. Two hundred and thirty one mass for Smith versus three hundred. So Yamadama really back into the lead on the eco side of things, and I think he must be upgrading support commanders with uh, their resource upgrade. Because he's continuing to pull ahead, and we've got a Tsar under construction back here as well. Now, Revenants queuing up at the bottom for Mr. Smith. Does that uh, mean that we have a snipe on the way? Could well be. Another push over in the east for Yamadama. on the ground now for Smith. He's all experimental and air power. Virtually no ground units to speak of. Lord incoming at the front. He zaps a couple of units of engineers. Still trying to work on some defenses up at the front there. Now another large air battle brewing. Shockers pulling out to the east. Smith looking like he was going after them for a moment, Micro is going to be crucial. Dharma, for a moment, looked like he had a larger air force, but it's quite hard to see in the heat of the battle. Smith getting caught out there for a moment. Monkey Lord down in the middle of this fracas between the ASFs. The Shockers are afforded some time to finish that off, yet more mass deposited on the doorstep for Yama Dharma. And now Mr. Smith's ASFs pulled over the top of these SAMs. And that will be the end of those. We have a lot of strap bombers incoming. What is he going for? That is the question. Coming up towards the power grid. He could be going after the anti-nuke. The SAMs launch a volley. Indeed they are. Impact on the shield at first. There goes the nuke defense. Do we have any more? Yamadama's already on the move. I don't think we do. So Yamadama just looking like he was getting on top of this game. And now he has a gaping hole in his nuke defense. And there goes the nuke from Mr. Smith. Support commander's going pop. Thanks to continuous work from the Revenants. The gunships were brought in there as well. Yamadama taking a massive hit to his power grid even before the launch of that nuke. Everything now drawn out of the main base. Dharma knows exactly where that nuke is going. It's going dead center on what's left of his stuff. Boom, baby. Another very nice nuke from Mr. Smith. Suddenly, that 300 mass lead is cut to 2 2 1. Rather, not mass lead, but the uh, production coming out from Dharma. The lead is down to low 20s. And Dharma now pushing out of his main base. And this could be dangerous for Smith. He hasn't got a lot on the ground, as we've already discussed. His air force has been hit badly. Shockers coming in from Dharma, working on this forward position, and uh, Smith's ACU has actually disappeared. Take a quick look on where that bad boy is. No, it hasn't. It was staring me in the face. <laughs> it's the Cybran. They're just so dark. <laughs> I couldn't see. He was in the, uh, the crater. 
But that's a bad place to stand your planes, Dharma. And he agrees. Quickly moving them out there. The Megalith should be able to deal with much of this incoming units, but he's got two fronts he's got to be concerned with. He's got units coming in from here and here, but also a huge amount of units coming in from the north. Take a look at what Mr. Smith can see. He's got decent intel coverage everywhere at this point. Omni is surely online. But he doesn't have much to keep this out of his base. He's got a monkey lord under construction, which is actually, to be fair, nearly about to go into the green for 75%. Mr. Smith now down here. Okay, so Mr. Smith has a teleport online, which could be dangerous for Dharma. He's got T3 engineering suite. There's the teleporter. And he's got the microwave laser generator. So at any time, Smith can go for a telemaser comm snipe on Dharma's comm. Where is Dharma's comm? He's up here, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Let's go to split screen so we don't miss it in case Mr. Smith does decide to go for it, which I'm sure he's going to because he's about to take huge amounts of damage. And there goes the teleport. Icon not displaying correctly. We've passed the one hour mark. Epicosity is in play. Mr. Smith's base is going up in flames, but it's not going to matter as he teleports next to the comm. Does he kill the Oblivion turrets in time? Yes, he does. Yamadama does not get enough PD up in time. He was well aware of what was going to happen. Yamadama, unimpressed with the way that's finished. Says bad game. No, I'm sorry. That was a good game. That had everything you could want and more. All very entertaining. And we'll go back to the old splash screen here as we can load up game two. So there you go. I was being very cryptic and secretive as to which of the two replays we were going for today. And uh, it was going to be the epic one. It was the first one. But it's good, you see, because you didn't know when it was going to end. So uh, although we're going to be miffed about the titles quite being long enough for uh, everybody to be mentioned, it doesn't matter. We've got it all here. But anyway, game two is going to go down on Fields of Thunder. So a, a little bit of more confined space, a 5v5 or 5x5, five five, sorry, this time. And we'll take a look at who's playing down here at the bottom right in the blue corner. It's BC's Cack Noob. And I think that's actually BC Jolly. I think he changed his name. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think it is. Uh, but even if I was sure on it, I would still call him Cack Noob because I think that name is stunning. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's just fun to say Cack Noob without actually being offensive. I'm not calling him Cack Noob. That is his, just a, that's his name. That's fine. But anyway, he's misclicked and he's gone cyber and he's opened first land, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth land. He's all about the land today. And... Uh, uh, yeah, so there we go, and like I say, he's in the blue corner, and in the red corner up here, already sending some labs across the field, also misclicked on Cybrin, so it's a mirror matchup for Cybrin, and uh, he's open first, I've a 100 land factories as well, and he is Kimosabe, I like a little bit of Kimosabe. So a lab out for Kimosabe, you wouldn't think that there was a lot of work that a, an early lab, or at least a lab this early could get done. But certainly Kimosabi likes his chances. He sent it up here to the hillock. Cap Noob obviously had this happen to him before. Has protected the engineer flawlessly. Mantis and uh, Mole affording decent protection. They're going to go chase that lab away. Run away! But I think the labs are definitely faster. You see the uh, gap growing. But uh, that spirit allowing Cack Noob. I'm just going to call him Cack, I think. Or maybe Noob. Allowing Cack to maintain a decent distance from that lab and eventually chase it down. Scout plane circling overhead of Kimosabe. 
And Kak actually coming towards the center now with his ACU. And don't forget there's a lot of reclaim on the ground down here. There is a ton of rocks to be picked up there. A lot of mass, especially on a, uh, a small map like this one. Kimosabi now coming, or Kimosabi now coming to the center with his ACU as well. And he does seem to have more on the field in terms of ground power. Bomber out for Cat Noob circling. Misses the engineer on the first one. Nice little bit of micro from Kimosabi keeping that engineer alive. Sky Slammer's en route to help defend that poor chap who's really is getting gunned for right now but another nice little maneuver keeps him alive long enough for the sky slammers to dispatch that bomber jester inbound now from cac noob picking off the odd unit here and uh it's decent uh, little play from cac noob but it's not going to last too long because the map, as we said, very small, easy for a player to start depositing large groups of anti-air, especially if you're cyber. And remember, the Sky Slammers can toggle ground as well, so it's not so much of a disadvantage against the ground game to build a lot of anti-air, especially early on for cyber. It's one of their little advantages. Lots of newbies might not know that that's a toggleable ability. Certainly gives you versatility in the early game. So Kimo Sabi naturally profiteering, I think, from the opening stages on this one. And now the posturing begins between these two forces. The ACUs meet in the middle, get a little bit of com on com action. And Kimo Sabi going to run into heavy forces down here. There's also an auto gun online. Kimo Sabi trying to batter that down with some Medusa fire. Won't be successful at killing it, but it will be successful in eradicating the engineers in that area. Cacnu going to have to rebuild those. And the feint with the second army moves north as well from Kimasabi. So initial engagements went rather well for Cacnu, who's definitely recovered from his lightness on the ground. Let's take a look at how these two guys are doing in terms of units. 49 Mantis on the field for Cac Noob and just seven Medusas. How does that compare? Well, many more Medusas. 24 on the field for Kimosabi with just 22. So even split between Medusa and Mantis for Kimosabi. Kaknu much, much heavier. Eight minutes down in this one already. Kaknu just trying to corner off Kimosabi's units, but actually running out of units here. Going to be a minor win, I think, for Kimosabi. Actually, maybe not. Suddenly, tables turned hugely. This might be a factor of the amount of Medusa on the field. Direct fire competition. Going to be going Cat Noob's way. Still a lot of reclaim in the middle. Let's take a look at who's done better so far, though. Kimosabi. Pulling in 9,400 mass. Cac Noob 9,000. Virtually nothing in it between these two guys. Decent work being made up here. On the front line by Cac Noob. And those forces getting a nasty, nasty bashing. And vulnerable build capacity up here at the top gone very badly for Kimusabi. He's also trying to push through the middle, but we've got Cerberus turrets in play. We also have a T2 land factory. So I'm wondering, do we have T2 com as well? No, we don't. We have just the T2 land factory back here. That would have been a, an engineer that initiated that 
Cerberus turret build. We also have Tech 2 deployed for Kimusabi, his land factory way back here. Thirty-one mass to twenty-three in favor of our red cybern player. Much better upgrading of eco on this one so far. Bombers coming in from Kimosabi, branching a little bit more into the air game now. Having previously Stayed away, they get a round of bombs off and then they head south to harass the main base. Kak Noob trying to wheel westwards with these troops. He's going to prompt a lot of reinforcements to move north to intercept. I don't think he's going to get anything done there. No run by into the main base possible. Bombers going after lots of T1P gens, four of them biting the dust on that run. Defending interceptors will be successful in shooting those down, but a little run by does get into the main base for Kimusabi and threatens a couple of T1 mechs. Take a look at what that's done to Kak Noob's power grid. It has bottlenecked him on power. 167 minus 167 net on current expenditure. Not ideal. Kimusabi will be wanting to reassign these and at least take down this mechs as well. 25 mass to 32. This time in favor of Kak Noob. Quite sure what's gone on. There have been a couple of mechs taken down up here. Presumably that's all. But once again, pretty close. Let's take another look at the reclaim. You uh, want to look at it on a lot more on a map like this because it will be so much more telling than on the larger maps. Because there's a less mass to be scooped up. 16,500 for Kak Noob Bank so far. 13,000, borderline 14,000 for Kimusabi. So advantage there. Evens now on generated mass. But as that Rhino and Mantis moves further into the base, will it be successful at picking off any more P-Gens? The best bet would be to go after some of this build capacity. Not going to be able to chew through any of these structures Especially with that Rhino going down. 30 mass apiece. Incredibly close this one. But we are seeing a little bit of fortification going on from Kak Noob. Starting to secure the middle. Two Cerberus turrets online. And now he's grabbing some of the middle center mass as well. to knock this back up a notch to plus two. 13 minutes gone in this one. And now the standoff begins between these two guys. We're starting to see some counter Cerberus turrets go back for Kimusabi, but it's so very difficult once your opponent is already established, you're on the back foot, you've got to fall back and try and create an impenetrable line and prevent any possible point defense creep. Remember on top of it as well, you've got this difficult land formation, these two gigantic craters in the center, which would just play havoc with your units and also your point defense. So unit structure placement is uh, vital, decent structure placement. Got to think about it pretty carefully. T2 mechs in play now for Kak Noob, and he really has leapt ahead with that. 57 mass now, 29. Kimusabi is going to have to make some kind of a maneuver here to get on top. Bombers incoming. Don't manage to get any bombs away, but do manage to land squarely on top of some of the units. Don't take any units with them, though. damage can be pretty darn brutal in this one and we have t3 on the field for kimusabi and that could be the switch that he needs first thing off the conveyor belt is a trebuchet 
It's going to be able to uh, allow him to range these Cerberus turrets. And indeed, this ball of units, which I number him, I think, not by a huge amount, but certainly enough. A little bit of self-destruction going on there from Cat Nuke. Needs extra mass. And his HQ down here. He's actually on an upgrade as well to T3, but he's only on 42%, so he's got a ways to go. And this is certainly the opportunity for Kimusabi to grab a little bit of ground back here and regain potentially control of this one once more. He needs to do it quickly. All the time this is going on, Kaknu is gaining way more resources. Double his eco almost. want to go too early, wants to finish off all of the Cerberus turrets, make sure they don't kill off any of his units. You can get some Medusas in here to EMP them, that would be nice, but the trebuchets do get the work done, and now Kimusabi going to bring those forward. That T3 factory is complete, and he's immediately going to start working on some counter trebuchet so we're going to get into a bit of an arty slinging match now between these two guys despite uh, what the mass counter displays this is a pretty even game on this one so far and that looks like some viper fire incoming Another Cerberus turret further back here, down to the red, 462 HP on that chappy. There he goes with another volley. T2 mixes here are a must-take. It's going to find it really difficult to get in and damage the main base, at least for the moment. Needs to prioritize this forward base and take out those mexes. One down already. There's also the T2 radar system. Give you an idea how much of the ground that covers on a 5x5 five five map, five map. It really is all you need. One of those will tell you everything you need to know. So that is a high priority target for Kimusabi. Pack noob up front with his ACU. Plenty of energy storage can fire away. Double rounds of overcharge. Musabi now taking counter trebuchet fire. Needs to be careful. Is going to move those units. And one of them on just 61 hit points. But still, that deficit persists. 62 to 47 in favor of Kaknu. Kimasabi banking 24.5k mass so far. Kaknu on 27. So Kaknu winning on both generated mass and the reclaim side of things. As this game progresses, that's going to be harder and harder for Kimasabi to contend with. These two players unwilling to commit. Either wanting to lose their forces, happy to just poke at one another with artillery for the moment. And now indeed that second T2 mech under pressure. Mass storage out of commission. Just 738 of 3000 HP left. There it goes. Wasabi keeps Cat Noob within his sights. Twenty-two and a half minutes gone in this one. And neither player looking like he wants to make a serious move. A couple of bricks in here. Looks to be about three or so for Kak Nu. We've got about six up here for Kimusabi, but the threat isn't what's on the ground in terms of land units. It's the ACU up here, which is going to be able to brush them aside. 
without any real difficulty. The rate of fire looks pretty high there from Kaknuk's com. He's got the stealth system and he's also got the rate of fire upgrade, but he's taking a lot of fire now. He needs to be a little bit careful down into the yellow 6,800 hit points left as he backs up. 8,900 suddenly accumulated as he gains veterancy. And this is exactly why Kimosabi was reluctant to commit the fringe lighter lower tech units diminish in number and all he's left with are the bricks now we're seeing Corsairs beginning to mount in number but Kak Noob still keeping ahead in the eco game ecoing nicely upgrading mass as he goes 71 to 49 Now very much a war of attrition. Who is going to manage to deplete more of their opponent's units? That's what Kimo Sabi has to do now. He's too far to behind to be able to just out-eco Kak Noob. He needs some victories on the field. But at the same time, Kaknub not wanting to be aggressive. He's not sending units up to Kimasabi's side of the map, and that means no potential for victories on Kimasabi's side of the map, and no mass thus for him to scoop up post battle. Shield Gen taken down there, more trebuchet fire incoming. The T1 mechs has been rebuilt, another one on the way. And just one brick now at the front line, actually. Excuse me, two more a little bit further back. Kaknu's going to want to bring those in, but a round of Corsair fire comes in from Kimo Sabi. Interesting decision goes straight after the T3 factory, and I didn't honestly think he was going to get it. That's why I was saying interesting decision. But he manages to. That's a very nice, precise strike from Kimusabi. Bricks. Focusing for a moment on Kak Noob's ACU. But forced to back up. Don't have the power to complete the conquest. But that's going to stifle T3 production for a little while. At least while a new HQ is built. You can see the T2 being acquired there. It's not going to take any real time at all. And complete and immediately into T3 as well, which will take a little bit longer. But Kak Noob so far ahead. Double eco now. And Kimo Sabi just not able to get back on level pegging. See, we've got T3 Mexes. Emerging down here for our blue Cybran. And despite that uh, masterful little Corsair strike from Kimusabi, it seems like there's no real way out for him because Kak Noob can sit back, he can eco, and eventually this game should hand itself to him. 9 minutes gone so far in this one. Kimusabi just picking off the odd structure as and where he can. <laughs> Map control wise, it's crazy. It's all in Kimusabi's hands, but he's so devoid of core mass development in comparison to his opponent. And he is trying to work on it to uh, his credit. He's nearly completed a T3 mechs back here. That will get him back in with a shout here. There we go. 81 to 58. Looking considerably better. Immediately starts work on a shield gen. That uh, HQ though now operational once again. 
really was a, uh, a stunning little Corsair run. Look at these power-assisted Gunthers further back. Offering the beatdown for any groups of units coming into this kind of area. And more power-assisted Gunthers up here. Noob. Just uh, determined to keep Kimosabi at bay. Out of this corner, we've got Tack Missiles launched from Kak Noob. Whereabouts was the uh, the launcher? There we go. Seven kills already on that guy. No doubt he's been picking off Mexes. Zappers definitely needed. You can see some in play already for Kimosabi. But we do have a Monkey Lord queued up. Once that ion generator is online. Or ion reactor. But look at this. 123 mass to 58. And expenditure at a minimum, to be honest. Not a great deal going on from Cat Noob. He's storing mass, no doubt wanting to plow it all into that monkey lord. Once he's got the power. Postpones production a little bit to get a shield online, but another round of Corsairs comes in. If he can take that down, that will be amazing. The shield gen quickly rebuilt second volley not enough and that's quite costly he needed that kill depletes the shield once again but needs another couple of corsairs to get the kill he needed it oh but will trebuchets get it done from the north so very close. Cybran shields, while usually useless, are fantastic at getting up and running quickly. Counter trebuchets setting up to bombard that position. Another shield in play. I think the opportunity has passed. And there we have it. Denied. That could be crucial. All Kimusabi got for his trouble was a little bit of build capacity. Definitely not what he was looking for. 116 now to 71. Still in favor of Kak Noob. How are we doing on the reclaim side of things? 59,000 for Kak Noob and 30,000 for Kimusabi. Bad state of affairs. I do love what he's been doing with the Corsairs. But that was just one mission too far. If you'd have had one more, one more would have done it, I think. Such is life. Now Cat Noob building up a nasty little group of bricks in the center there. Very strange game. This one, very unusual game of Fields of Thunder. Long, drawn-out, arty-slinging match. It'll be nice to see a Cybran player turtle a little bit. Say what you like about turtling. It is effective. much so on these smaller maps. Kak Noob bringing in a much more significant number of bricks to the party. Wasabi's going to have to back out of that. Still, Wasabi trying to get something done with these trebuchets, but no joy. have a second run at this and what would that do to Kak Noob's power well not enough is the question or the answer I should say
centre region now, with all the static D in the centre for Kimosabi, due to just get peppered, I should imagine, with artillery fire. That Monkey Lord, 28,000 to 45,000 complete. And that will surely represent the end of the game if that thing is allowed to go online. Bricks for Cack Noob just straying forward, taking a little bit of Cerberus turret fire, but... Uh, Kaknu could be a little bit bolder here. There's certainly no reason to it, but what on earth was that attack missile barrage? Yes, it was. Tack missile battery up here at the back takes out the iron reactor. Now, if he could launch against the monkey lord, that would be an ideal target if he's got more missiles in the silos. Usually, it takes so much to build these things. As soon as you have the volley you launch. I think that Monkey Lord's going to get online. Yes, it is. It took a little bit of damage. About 10,000 hit points or so, but... Lovely little bit of work. Although, it looks like it could be too little too late. The Corsairs take off and head in towards the bricks. Take one of them down. Air advantage definitely in Kimosabi's corner for the moment, but there's just nothing on the ground in terms of Static D at the base here. Kimosabi's calm right up here at the back. Bricks just so unbelievably hardy. Kimosabi's going to need to come forward and overcharge some bricks, surely. But it's not going to matter. There's a Monkey Lord inbound. Even if he finishes off these bricks, which I don't think it looks like he's going to. He's trying to dodge as best he can. But the bricks are going to get it done. Kimusabi just drilled into the sand on that one. Really unusual fields of thunder. You just don't see the long protracted turtle matches like that. Definitely not with uh, the higher level players, but like I say, guys, hope you enjoyed that. As always, more to come from me in the future. A little bit of an experiment today. Don't know if we will uh, we'll do that again. I shall surmise from your comments, see how you what you uh, you feel like, uh, whether or not that's a good idea or not. But uh, the longer videos actually help me because it gives you me audience retention, which helps the amount of free promotion. I get on YouTube. So the longer the videos, the more people that watch the long videos, which is actually why some of my Seaton's replays, albeit they're not actually the best casts, uh, have some of the highest amounts of views because it's pulling in the most kind of new viewers, if you will. But uh, anyway, like I say, hope you enjoyed that. More to come from me in the future. In the meantime, as always, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.